Godhead. You know, Greg, forget about whether you think the other person is tracking or agreeing or following. Uh, just keep pouring it out. And man, last night um, on that thread, man, I just commented on that thread like a maniac till like 10 o'clock at night. And I was like, what am I doing? I haven't ironed my clothes. I haven't even prepared the, the message. From, what's the, you know, but at the end of it all, man, I got so much revelation from just looking at what they said. Um, about Romans 9 and how to explain that, that I can't wait to go preach on Romans 9. Is this going to blow? I mean, things I've never saw That's a huge and considered the right way. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, and it, it's so, I mean, even what I said I thought was great, but as I was riding in the car today, the spirit is still twisting on it. Bro, me and too, you. right? I'm getting off the, off <laughs> yeah. the highway like, oh my goodness. The spirit is still twisting on it. But yeah. it talks about a vessel being fitted for wrath. And then we immediately think that means God created them specifically for wrath. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. But whenever you interpret scripture, what we tend to do is pluck out a scripture verse mm -hmm. and then decide what it means. Mm -hmm. we, we struggle. The human intellect cannot consider the whole counsel of God when they read a verse. And so we consider one thing yes. and then we decide what it means but what the spirit will do is when it reads a verse it will consider the whole counsel of God when it looks at that verse not just that verse it will consider the whole thing and so immediately this morning when I was driving into work or to church it says uh, a vessel fitted for wrath and then I remember the verse that says we store up for ourselves wrath and so we create ourselves as a vessel we fit ourselves as a vessel for wrath. God just creates us. He doesn't create us and fit us for wrath. We fit ourselves for wrath. Should we reject life by the spirit of grace? Right? And so God is merciful to all, but you won't experience his mercy for you unless you believe on his grace. <laughs> right? Because you won't really see what he's, what he's done to conquer your sin and your death. You won't see why he's done it. You won't see he's set apart unto the spirit of grace. You'll think he's set apart unto the spirit, spirit of the serpent. Right? And so God is merciful towards all, but not all will experience his mercy because the only way you can experience his mercy is if you see his eyes are full of grace towards you. That's the only way you can see his mercy. Now, if you re should you reject his grace, you're fitting yourself as a vessel for wrath, right? Yeah. And that doesn't mean God's anger on you. It means that within your vessel will be seen God's rejection of the wisdom that says you can have life by your works. His grace has to be bestowed upon you. Hold, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Then I got to finish this thought. I'm gonna go with you. It's no, no, I know, but I, I got to tie in this last part, and then I'm gonna defer to everybody, and then we'll move on from this. But. Um, if we look at the Israelites, God didn't create them as a vessel for wrath. And he's not saying that he created them for a vessel for wrath in Romans 9. What he's saying there is I've created all people, right? And should they reject my grace and fit themselves as a vessel for wrath, that doesn't mean that I can no longer use their hardened heart to show my glory. Did I not create all people? Am I only hamstrung into using those who believe on me to reveal my glory? No, 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 no. Even should a person harden their hearts to me and my grace, I can still use their hardened heart to show my glory. And if you look, he's talking about Israel there. Israel hardened their hearts to God. Was God happy about that? Didn't Jesus say, Israel, Israel, I came to gather you unto myself, but you would not? Does that sound like God created them for wrath? Nope. Yeah. No, sounds like God created them for mercy, but they fitted themselves as vessels of wrath because when grace, grace came in the person of Jesus, they rejected him. And so they stored up for themselves wrath. Now, listen, God still used them to reveal his glory, even though they rejected him and hardened their hearts to him. And that's what Romans 9 is talking about, because what did God do with their hardened hearts? When Jesus came as grace, because they had hardened their hearts to God in his grace, they crucified the Lord of glory. And then that revealed the goodness of God to human beings because God is hanging on a cross, dying away the sin and death of the world. And so he didn't need them to believe on him to use them to reveal his glory. Even should they have hardened their hearts to him, he still used their hardened hearts towards him. And the result of it, when they nailed him to a cross, because that was God revealing his glory. What is his glory? 
that he's only good to humans even when they smack him on one side of the cheek. That even when humans set themselves up as his enemy, he loves them. Even when humans persecute him, he blesses them. Even when humans despitefully use him and hate him, he pours out his life for them. His glory was revealed and he used Israel who hardened their hearts to him to show it. And that's what Romans 9 is actually talking about. I credit all people. And I don't just use the ones who believe on me to show my glory. Yes. I also can use the ones who reject me yes. to show my glory. Yes. And that's the same thing with Pharaoh. If you go and study it out, it's a, the first thing it says is Pharaoh hardened his heart. Yes. That's the first thing it says. And then after that, it starts saying God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Well, all that means is God kept coming to Pharaoh and speaking grace. And Pharaoh had hardened his heart to grace, so he didn't like it. So every time he heard the grace, he was cut at the heart and he would gnash at his teeth. Right? He didn't want to hear that nonsense. And so every time he heard it, his heart would become more hard. You see how God also used Pharaoh's hard heart to show his glory and his goodness? Mm -hmm. Because the more Pharaoh tried to rise up and reject God, God demonstrated the strength of his grace in comparison to the strength of the arm of man. He revealed right. his ability and his goodness to conquer sin and death and to give eternal life. Right? Mm -hmm. So he doesn't fashion people for that, but he's not, his arm isn't shortened. He's not so weak that he can't still use them should they choose to reject their grace. And I don't mean use them like we think of using a person, right? If we think we can get something from them, we use them and we don't. I just <laughs> mean that he allow, their heart and heart can still manifest in a way that would cause God's glory to be seen, right? And that's what Romans 9 is talking about. And I'll go back and we'll stop and and we'll preach a message on it and go verse by verse, but we store up for ourselves wrath, the scripture says. Wrath was never created for human beings. The wrath of God existed before humans even fell. The wrath of God existed towards the serpent and the ser serpent system for having life. He rejected that system. Lucifer, your wisdom is corrupted. It can't exalt you. It can't give you life. He rejected it. And so the, the, the devil and, and his angels, man, they're, they're, they're in chains stored up for judgment day, for wrath, right? In the day where he comes and makes his final rejection of that wisdom and that way of thinking, and it's consumed, and it ceases to exist. Now, human beings can store up for themselves that day, right? And they can do it by joining themselves to the serpent, the serpent's wisdom. It doesn't mean God created them that way. Sorry, all right. Oh, aren't 